gonna see. We're gonna see. Uh, he was talking shit to me then. But we're gonna see. We're gonna see who light skinned when Alabama tag off on Georgia. Man, we'll I'm not worried about it, bro. Y'all lost to Texas A&M. How many times? How many times Alabama lost one game in the season, still won the whole championship? BCS That's true. And all. That's true. So. I'm not, I'm not the type of person that don't tell the truth. See, you over exaggerate stuff. I'm not over exaggerating. How am I over over exaggerating, bro? What I said. We we gonna find out. Bro. I just said don't talk about my state. We gonna find out, dog. I ain't even worried about it. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Undefeated Minds Podcast, where we represent elevated innovation over ignorance. I'm your boy, your dog, your daddy. You feel me, Deshaun? Go ahead and introduce yourself, man. You know what it is, bro. It's your boy Shotter, Mister Stepper. So I don't know what he got going. We back in this thing, man. We done recorded several different episodes. Have been inconsistent like crazy. But we back to this grind because this setup is super simple and comfortable. You know what I'm saying? We was, it was in the living room at our other spot. We was. So now we back in the living room <coughs> with this. But you want to know what that, that made me do? It, I really want to paint this wall now. I've been saying that. We've been talking about that. And I really want to paint. probably paint that wall too. Don't tell them too much, man. You can't tell too much, bro. Nah, bro. It's progress. It is progress. But, again, you know, I like to pop out. Mm, and then tell them after the progress. Give people, you, give people some insight. You, you know can give saying? them insight after you do it and then while you're working on the next insight. You can still drop jewels, but after you finish mm-hmm. the jewels. I, I guess I hear you. Because, again, like, people going to be like, okay, you talk about it, then be about it. But then once you be about it. You already know I'm. I'm I I'm know you're big on that. But, see, once you already big on it, you tell, like, look, this is what I did. So, I'm putting it on camera. So, next episode, by the time next episode come, that wall will be black. Right. You know what I'm saying? Simple. Simple. So, it's that simple, bro. We just uh, <laughs> say it, speak it into existence, and then go accomplish it. Especially when it's on his demands. I know for a fact. Mines, I get shit done. I get mines done in probably a week time, week and a half. But he working on it. Yeah, he get his done, and I definitely say it two day, two or three day time. But I mean, saying, saying progress. Consistent. Yeah, it's a progress step. Um, so what's going on, bro? What's 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 the current event in the world that we that we done missed since we've been gone? R. Kelly got locked up. Let's talk about Chappelle. <laughs> Chappelle show. Chappelle How the transgenders try to try to attack Chappelle, but did you watch it? I ain't watched the Chappelle show yet, so don't really give too much cover up. But I have seen some things where they was like he spoke about, and it actually occurred when a coach ended up saying something of like a player up saying he got black tire type lips, and then. He you, up, talking about, you talking about Breath from the Raiders? Yeah, he was like, he said something about black tired lips, and they ain't say nothing, but then he ended up saying like the F word, like, the you know, faggot or something like that, mm. and do end up getting fired. And so they ain't say nothing when they was talking about, you know, black people, but then once you come to say something about them, they get shit done, so. Oh, so he said the F word. Yeah, and he and got then that's when he counsel got fired. Got fired. Then when he said the, the black lips, They ain't say nothing about it. I, so that do intertwine with kind of like what Dave Chappelle was saying. It yeah. was like, oh, it's cool that the baby went in Walmart in Greensboro mm-hmm. or Greenville. Was it Greensboro or Greenville? Greensboro. Greensboro killed the guy. Yep. Talk that about That was it. cool. His career wasn't tainted. But yep. then as soon as he say, you feel me, some stuff with the LGBTQ. That's a problem. It's an issue. Now his career is canceled. So Dave Chappelle used his magnificent talents to try to Expose. get uh, the baby out of LGBTQ jail time. <laughs> so that being said, do you feel as if there is an agenda being pushed towards the LGBTQ community versus the black community? You know what I'm saying? Because obviously I, something's going on. I feel like it is. Uh, it is more. They have they get shit done as far as when they want it to get done and how they want things to be pushed, it get done regardless. Because So that's the pros of them. Yeah. Like mm. 
they definitely I agree. when they when they want to get something canceled and done, I bro, agree. they get it. That's done. respect, bro. And so, I mean, you know, it's that's what they do. The 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 cons of it is not all, but some they use that to take advantage of people that can't. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like a lot of men, straight men, can be talked about and be tarnished, and then, you know, on the flip side, it's like. Once you put yourself into that that situation, it's so much that we can lose out of it, you mm-hmm. know. But again, you have the ones that respect straight men, and you have the ones that take a privilege and be like, "Oh, so you want to talk bad about such and such and take it to the extreme?" And it's just really one of them things where a lot of men, like myself, like I find myself not even really talking on it, like speaking on it a lot. Like this is really my first time, probably my only time I'm really gonna say something on it, but because it's just like it's it's a rabbit hole you can get caught up in, and you really don't want to get. Caught up in it, like even Chappelle. Chappelle said he made a joke twenty years ago talking about it in a little bar when he was first coming out, and then yeah, he yeah, still be hard on about that slander. You know what I'm saying? It's like you really once you get caught up into that thing, it's almost like you being labeled as like a predator. Like now, mm. or you homo, like you homophobic, mm. or you trans, like you 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 hate trans, and like it ain't even about that. It's just just respect me as a man because. I won't want to disrespect you just like I don't want you to disrespect me. So I feel like I feel like the the argument that they fight for as far as in respect and I guess I guess the form of equality, you know what I'm saying? Even though I believe nobody is equal. That's just my opinion, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like the quality of respect that they fighting for they're becoming the people who they're trying to fight against. You mm, know what I'm saying? Like, the oppressors. Yeah, like you trying to oppress people off of their own opinion by bullying them to agree with what you got going yeah, on. To like, accept and stuff But like not that. everybody agree with that mindset. Now, I'm not saying like as far as in the, the statistics of people getting beat up and stuff like mm-hmm. that. I'm not saying that that's right. Right, right. I, I agree that that's 100% wrong. Same way how... I believe, like, how Chappelle was saying, like, I have no issue with against none of you. You know what I'm saying? He used a a skit or a scenario that he used as a joke about how he had a friend that was a trans woman. Right, right. Um, but overall killed herself. And because of bullying, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's the same way how, how can you become, fight against an oppressor and then ultimately become... Uh, the oppressor. oppressor. You I mean, what that, that's what you you become what you hate. True, and he had an issue with he he didn't have an issue, but he made a silly joke that I think it went past a lot of people. That how can Jews be slaves and then come over and enslave black people through entertainment? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And he said that specifically in the way where it was a joking manner, but if you pay was, attention, if you, you pay attention hard enough, it was kind of like you caught it. You you was like damn. It's like the uh, the other message you too. He said the black guy. It's kind of the same thing. It was like the black guy was a slave, end up getting free, end up owning slaves. Yeah, that was the example. But he was like, you want to know what I, I call that a movie? Mm. It was a uh, something something Jew, but it was basically he was talking about how these are not my words, but he was saying basically how Jewish people enslave blacks yeah. basically through entertainment. Um, but again, how can you become somebody who you ultimately hate, or are you trying to you ultimately become somebody who who you're going against? Mm-hmm. You do you become what you hate the most because I feel like that's what you focus on the most. So since you focus on it, you ultimately become it. Um. So yeah, I you can't really. Hurt, hate on nobody or get mad at somebody because they have an opinion about it. If we all agree on the same shit, then the world will be ran a certain way. But the world not ran a certain way. It's a hierarchy. You feel me? Like, and you can't fight the hierarchy because of the people who, you know me, I always say the bullies win. But also common sense ain't common. So it's, I mean, it goes into the, the simple things like how you can see something, how to answer it, how I would see how you know, how to answer something is two different ways, but you still get the same results. Now, if it's, you know, the simplicity That's of delusion. it. It is delusion. If we're we not progressing. 
You know what I'm saying? But again, it's like being able to agree to disagree, being able to say, look, I don't agree with that 100 percent. Let's try it a different way respectfully instead of saying, oh, we just going to counsel this person or we, you know, we ain't going to tell them how to get it. Because there's a lot of stuff like I don't even remember when counseling really became a trend. It, it started trending for real, for real. This year, like these couple past years that we're doing COVID or something. Mm-hmm. But then again, it's like you going to counsel somebody career off of an opinion or off of an action. Because of how they feel. Right. It's not like they're being derogatory towards so, you. You know what I'm saying? It's like if somebody be like, like, I remember it was a little thing going on on TikTok saying, like, I don't want to date a trans woman. I want to date a natural born woman. Mm-hmm. They, they started calling people tra- uh, transphobic. Transphobic. Yeah. Like, yeah. so you're upset at me because I don't want to date a woman, who, a man who created himself to become a woman. Yeah. But I want a natural born woman. Like, that's confusion. That's chaos. Like, I just, you can't like get I upset said, at me because that's what I want. The same way how you want, what you want to change change yourself into whatever you want to change yourself right. in. You choose what you have the ability to choose. Can't nobody fault you for that. But I got the ability to choose how I feel, and my what opinion, I want, what, and I, what I want, and what I prefer. So you can't be, you can't think that you're going to be able to force your views on somebody else and not believe that you're not a bully. Yeah, and and that's another thing I I noticed. Like, with that comment to being in fruition, like, like I said, I don't give a damn what you like. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can like what you like as long as it don't come into what I like. Um, I got plenty of friends that are homosexual, and I'm pretty sure I met some people that was transgender. But, I mean, I ain't really come across, like I said, that were aggressive to them or treated them any other type of way besides who they were. Um, I maybe have said him to somebody that was, you know, wasn't, you know. <laughs> but again, like, it's out of respect. And then I always catch myself to be respectful. But if, if I ever noticed anybody that ever tried to come in, I'm like, look, bro, I don't go like that. I, f- I feel like, bro, I'm going to give you a little pushback on this, and I might get a little pushback from anybody. I mean, for sure. Go ahead. Be real. But I personally feel as if I don't, you can't force me to call something that it ain't, you know what I'm saying, based off my opinion. True. Out of respect. You know what I'm saying? I understand why you would want me to call you another pronoun. That's one of your amendments, freedom of speech. But out of respect for my view, I can be like, that ain't what I see. Yeah. Like, I'm not about to... That's delusion. To affirm something that is not real is the beginning process of delusion. I am not delusional, bro. Like, this is what I see. This is what it is, and this ain't what it ain't. At the end of the day, you can't force me to see or believe something that you ultimately believe. Like, we have a religious battle going on. You know what I'm saying? You got Muslims versus Christians versus Jews versus, you know what I'm saying? All these different type of people, but at the end of the day, they respect each other as human, which that's my point. I respect you as a human, but that don't mean I got to force, you can't, you got to force me to see your point of view in life. You know what I'm saying? I got to agree with everything that you that you own, you know what I'm saying? Respect me, in my opinion, right. and I respect you, in your opinion, and it is what it is. No, I did, because I remember that conversation coming about, too, watching it, and it was like, it got to the point where people was calling themselves shims, dims, you know what I'm saying, like, whatever, and then now people are being able to classify themselves as animals. Like, when I seen them, like, what type of, you know what I'm saying, what type of shit is this? But what type again, of chaos? Yeah, like, it's, it's getting to that point, but, like, how I know to avoid a situation. Because it's like I said, I don't want no problems. But you bring problems to me, no problems. Right. It's 50, 50 cents cent. it. And so it's like, in order for me to avoid some type of misunderstanding or for me to have to apologize or to make you people feel comfortable, because I really, truthfully be told, I really don't give a fuck. <laughs> but just to keep down chaos, it's like, you almost got to be like you said, I'm going against my amendment by holding in my freedom of speech about how you feel. Like, I got to be careful how what I say to make you feel a certain type of way. This is Daquan. For those of y'all that didn't catch the pre-show. But uh, to go off of what Rashad was saying, or Rashad, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. to go off what he was saying, there are 72 genders now. There are 72 genders now for uh, people 
to go by. Mm-hmm. And by people, I do mean they, the they's, the them, mm-hmm. the her, the he's, the she's, the she males, the he males, all the he hers. There are 72 ways that they can go. As a man that goes by a he that is a male, mm-hmm. it's not easy for me to know and memorize all 72, 72 genders. Men don't even, men don't even, we don't, we have three, one track. One track. Do you have a vagina? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's like, do, do you have this? Do you have that? No? Yes. All right. So you, that, and that goes into what Deshaun was saying. It's like, it, we, we want straightforward answers. Men are very simple creatures. Right. It's either a yes or a no. It's either a he or a she. But again, that's how we were raised, and that's how growing up. And, and it was just what? What was it, like 10 years ago? It was just two. And now 10 years later, it's 72. What's it going to be 10 right. years later down the line? Right. 256? Right. You know gonna, what I mean? We're going to be having sex with robots. Exactly my point. Have, AIs, it's going to be crazy. Yeah. AIs crazy. are already coming into fruition. I'm going to be having sex. You saw the sex dolls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they they damn near feel real, but they when they... Start talking back. It's going to mm-hmm. be like, bro. And then I also want to take you back <laughs> to what uh, you two gentlemen were talking, gentlemen were talking about with uh, Dave Chappelle yeah. and the whole Daphne thing. Did you see it? I did. Oh, yeah, I yeah. watched the entirety of it. Yeah. And I even seen the show that he did before and made the transgender joke and everything. And I'm not going to ruin it for you, Shot. I want you to be able to see that yourself and you sure promote your own it. opinion. But the way he was talking about Daphne and the trans community, it might be hurtful to people who uh, don't have a sense of humor. And he said, if you don't have a sense of humor, you don't got to listen to my jokes. You, it's just, it's so easy for you to turn the TV off or not to buy a ticket to a show. Or not feel obligated to watch it because everybody else talking about exactly. it. Exactly. You don't have to spend your money on this particular human being, this man. I, he is open to that. I agree, but it's also said and done to this when it comes to that. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go so hard for it because, again, how many... Um, people that dress up as black faces. How many people talk about the boys in the hood movies, the scenarios, the the situations, the trauma of women growing up having single parent homes? How many people make jokes about that? And we look at it as humorous now, and that's the normal thing. And it's so funny because, oh, that's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But deep down inside, Every black person has some type of PTSD, anxiety, or some type of trauma. So this is what I say with that. And you know me, I always love to play both sides. Go ahead, bro. I have to play both sides because we don't have nobody in this room to defend mm. what they got going on. That's so fine. Let, let go me ahead. go in. The difference between them and us, as far as in community-wise, LGBTQ, you know what I'm saying, versus like the black community mm. is... Again, you got to understand war. You can't ask your oppressor to give you respect. You got to take it. So, in some shape or form, I do respect the fact that how they go about attacking people. Because it's like, either you going to respect me or I'm going to take it. And that's how war works. I think a lot of people get caught up into the emotional side of how war works. War does not is not ran by morals. So when you're trying to force your situation or beliefs upon others, you do it in an immoral way. You do it forcefully. You do it however it needed to be done for people to respect you. You get right, what I'm saying? Right, right. So same way with the black community upon about slaves. Dog, they did some immoral shit to make you be mentally and physically enslaved for it to go the way that it it went and it is currently going to this day. Right. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> it's kind of hard to say like they're wrong because wars are not ran through handshakes and peace. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. wars are won through sacrifice, blood, you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers dying, casualties of war. Yeah. That's how it's won. So I can't fault them for the way that they're going about it. I don't fault them, but I'm just making it understood, not to cut you off, but I'm just making it understood is if we can accept the fact of a joke, somebody joking, 
Openly joke. I don't that when we, when it come to that, it's just like you getting cracked on. It's a difference between people should know now being bullied and being cracked on. It, I, you can say you can say it's bullying, but it's still but they low key intertwined though. Yeah, it's like you you know if you know this is a comedian, he talks about anybody from from down to head. It don't matter. Presidents get talked about all the way down to poor people. This is comedy. If you want to count somebody off their own joke, I, I like, feel like I feel like, and that's the part we gotta be careful with. I feel like the cancel culture. You have cancel culture people in all cultures. Yeah, like the LGBTQ is not on the only cancel culture. Right. I think that you have multiple people who <laughs> try to cancel things that's going on. I, for example, since uh, Chappelle had the exam, uh, joke about Jews. Nick Cannon was finna be canceled by them Jews for saying what he was saying. Anti-Semitic uh, stuff. You know what I'm saying? When he had, uh, do- I think Dr. Griff, I got one of his books down here, which I highly respect, bro. But, you know what I'm saying? If you say certain things about certain people, they have the ability and the power to cancel you based off your opinion. Not even the fact that it's a, either it's a fact. It, it could just be opinion. You get what I'm saying? It's not okay, but we just going to have a rational decision. No, I'm going to force you to, to respect me. And that's the part, even within his own cult. I mean, even within his own skit, he said, it's not the fact that I hate you guys. I'm low-key envious of you guys because of you guys can stick together and make shit happen. If black people could do that same thing, do you know where we would be at? <laughs> Every time we try, we always get our folks killed. But we we are the only one. We're killing each other. You know what I'm saying? Not all the time, though. But uh, mass majority of the time where you feel like you're getting things done, infiltration, I get your own people to stab you in the back. That's real Who getting our people to stab us in the back, though? But you can't get past the person that's being infiltrated, the, the infiltrator. Yeah. You can't get past that. The weak people. You get what I'm saying? You, you, I got you, you worried about the puppet. We can't get past the puppet if you can't you can't get to the hand. The strings. You got to fo- focus on the hand first. I mean, the puppet first. Before you get to the hand, we still focus on the puppet. So, at the end of the day, whereas in that community, like, shit, we'll cancel you if you say the wrong thing. If you say the F word, you get what I'm saying? We're going to come after you. It's a respect thing. It's a war thing. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and pause this because we're going to transition over to this next uh, topic, which is the main topic, because it was kind of a good transition. Fuck all that. I'm going to talk what I want to say. I was just playing. <laughs> <laughs> but the next topic is, can you have love and power at the same time? So y'all hold that thought. We'll be right back. Oh, well, this is this chat again. But as I, was, as I was saying, I actually did do some research and watch majority of the clips and listen to a lot of things that Dave Chappelle had to say about his good friend Daphne. And it turns out that, and I will call her the proper uh, pronoun. pronoun that she would like to have been called, and that is a female. Right. I actually seen pictures of her. She undergone surgery. She looked just like a woman. I, I give it a little bit more. It could have been done, but we ain't going to talk about that. <laughs> So she she defended this man when her own community or her tribe as they like to call it was uh, was dragging this man in Twitter. No, Dave Chappelle don't care about that stuff. Right. He gives zero fucks. He can care less what you say about him. He thinks it's funny. Mm-hmm. She thought it was funny too. But this man who I be on stage said, I am transphobic, but I'm not against people. He saw her as a person. I agree with that. And he saw her as a comedian. So although she was in a whole different community, tribe, whatever you want to call it, she was also a part of his community. And that's what a lot of the uh, trans people and uh, the LBGTQ community is forgetting when they're talking about this situation. Mm -hmm. She was a comedian. So although they would say, I'm transphobic and all this stuff, he again was helping her live out her dreams. And he said, she is an amateur. Oh, yeah, She yeah, yeah. should not have opened up for me. Yeah. 45 minutes went by. She bombed 45 minutes of a comedy yeah. show. That, she yeah. was horrible. But did she care? No. She was having a time for life. Right. And after she got off stage, she sat front row 
and she saw this man's comedy show and she was reacting to it, laughing her ass off harder than anybody there. Then there was a heckler in the back who said, does the carpet match the drapes? And you know what this woman said? You you know what she said? What is that? She said, I'm sorry, honey. I have hardwood floors. The funniest joke she said the entire night. Crowd burst out laughing. And what they said was, it's like she didn't even bomb that first 45 minutes of the show. She instantly, instantly recovered from that. And after that, everything else was great. She was going back and forth with Dave while he was on stage and all that stuff. But to get to the meat of the whole story, on Twitter, her community was dragging Dave Chappelle. And she interjected and said, Dave Chappelle does not punch high. He does not punch low. He punches lines. He is a great uh, storyteller. He's a great comedian. And he took me under his wing. I respect him. You should respect him, too, for his crap. He's a master at it. Right. And after that, a week went by. Nothing but complaints from her own community. She killed herself. He does. He's not for sure, but after all those tweets went out, yeah. she jumped off a building. She jumped off. Splat. Yep. yep. She was. She is survived by her daughter, which Dave started a trust fund for, and will personally give his daughter, give her daughter, that uh, that trust fund money when she turns twenty one, and we'll have the conversation of. How, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I knew your father. He was a great woman. <laughs> and that's how he ended his joke. And I'm just sitting here thinking, how could you, as a community, this is my question to y'all, how could you as a community turn your back so hard on one of your own who was not just a part of you guys, but a part of the world? She wanted people to see her for a person and not for a thing. And y'all just... It just doesn't make sense. I I I, I agree with you, even yeah. though you you basically told the whole entire show. I told the story, <laughs> right, but look, no, you can still watch it. It's great. He said it a is lot great. more. I ain't going to detail detail. Yeah, but you get the you get the gist of it. Uh, what I'm about to say is about to be very harsh, but how war works, how you get your point across. You do have to sacrifice many to get your point across. It sucks to say this, but situations like that is called casualties of war. That's just how war works. I'm not saying that that's what I agree with, but in that situation, it's basically casualties of war for the LGBTQ to get their point across. I'm not saying it's right. I think it's that's just how war works. Let me just say that, man. So with that being said, man, with Dave Chappelle having all of this going on, now mind you, Dave Chappelle, Dave Chappelle is a comedian, and he's been doing this for a long time. Within this process of his height, of him growing, you know what I'm saying, he's been growing phenomenally. Would you consider this right now the peak of his career? It depends on how you're looking at it. It depends on how you're looking at it. Like, if you're looking at finances, then yeah. I think I think it, I think this is the peak of his career, in my opinion. I'm just saying. I mean, it's it's getting to that point because the the jokes like it's more. It's definitely more like deeply rooted. It's not like he's acting all crazy. He actually speaking in a normal voice. You know what I'm saying? Very true. It's not like he's acting out going, "Oh, what's up?" Like he's not doing that. Like he used to, like even Chris Tucker changed his, like how he used to act. Yeah, he didn't want to be. He, he didn't want to be. He was uh, like, "That's immature." Like I'm, I'm, I'm a veteran now. Like I'm a pro at this. This is my profession. Right. And like, if you're looking at the finances, he getting paid for what he's doing. So, I look at it too. Like this is this would be the peak. But some people will be like the, the old Dave Chappelle. The wah, wah, that that would be the funny. It depends on how you take you know what you look at in your interest. Again, it's your own opinion. But my personal opinion, I think the money to me, to money. So the money to you is, is why he had his peak. Yeah, I think I his. I think he had his peak because of the, all the attention that he grabbed. And now don't get me wrong, he had comedy, uh, Comedy Central. Yeah, and he was doing his skits right. Mm-hmm. He did them with Charlie Murphy. You get what I'm saying? Recipes of Charlie Murphy. 
mm. and everything. And those skits were phenomenal. He, but he he walked away from the fifty thousand fifty million dollars, right? Yeah, yeah. But now that he's back and he's drawing in so much attention, I think that he started to go on his peak and then he dropped. But I think he went even further beyond where he at because now you're on a platform with Netflix where you can talk about anything that you want to talk about. And now, obviously, they backed him up. You know what I'm saying? So, but then the it, reason why... Go ahead. Go no, ahead. But then again, there's no such thing as bad publicity. It's like Very I always true. heard... Lost six to the 40 year lost yeah. power. Court, court attention at all costs. Yep. But the reason why I say he's at the peak of his career is because he's getting the most hate. Mm. I personally believe that you cannot have love and power at the same time, which I is this whole, did, yeah, yeah, I, I, that transition yeah, was smooth, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, your boy, you get what I'm saying? But I personally believe that he is at his peak because he's getting the most hate that he could possibly get out of his career. Not only just from the LGBTQ, but he's getting hate from other comedians. You get mm. what I'm saying? On the way he was, as he was rising. You get what I'm saying? You had other comedians come out and say, Chappelle is not that funny. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Chappelle is this. Chappelle is that. I personally believe when you're getting the most negative hits, you're flourishing. If everybody like you... Mm, you average. You you below... You you are you average. You, you, it's like, okay, so for example, LeBron is the most powerful NBA player in the league right now. And the hated. And the most hated at the same time. Kobe dog. was too. Kobe was Kobe was hated. At his peak, everybody was waiting for Kobe to lose. Yep. Same way with Michael Jordan. Yep. Michael Jordan was at the peak of his career. People wanted to not, they didn't want him to win the championship. Yep. At that time period. If you look at, at that time period, people loved Michael Jordan, but you had hella people who hated Michael Jordan. Mike Tyson. Same thing, bro. All the greats. You know what I'm saying? Everybody that Even knew. Ali. Yeah, the greats. Here's an even better example. Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> when I tell you people don't watch Floyd Mayweather for him to win, yeah. they watch Floyd Mayweather to wait for him to lose. All right. So, and he's smart enough. I'm going to play devil's advocate in a minute. Go ahead. He's smart enough to be aware that the people are coming in for that reason alone. Yeah. So him and Conor, Conor McGregor, Basically fucked everybody. Talk big shit. Conor McGregor was at the peak of his career. Mm -hmm. Floyd, Mayweather was, Floyd Mayweather was somewhat at the peak of his career. He was, he was really going down, really. But at the same time, you know what I'm saying? Still he staggering still was, up. It was like going across. Like yeah, he went, he he was went steady. up and then he, he went across. He was steady. Right. He got into the situation with Conor McGregor and it made him go even higher. To another artist. Having a full sit down, understanding the type of money that they're going to bring in. That's why you have all these so called weak ass celebrity boxing matches. You know what I'm saying? With Jake Paul and Logan Paul and all them. You know what I'm saying? It's, <laughs> it's a money Paul. game. Whatever his name is, bro. But basically, Floyd knew that shit. Same way with 50 Cent knows that when he can start a controversial situation, it's going to give him more leverage yeah. over people. So using that as an example, my question to you is, can you have love and power at the same time? Bro? All right, can you hold that thought. Because <clears throat> this, this is me playing devil's advocate with your question. Like, Only person I could think of that had love and that was like, at the top was Michael Jackson. No. I can give you pushback on that. Yeah. Well, How many people say he, he was uh, child messing with little boys? But they was denied that, though. How, what did he go through in his childhood while he was at the peak of his career when he, he was a child? You're right, you're right, you're right. You can't have love and power at the same time, bro. Now, you can give me pushback. Like you, I, I want you to give me pushback because there are going to be a lot of people who believe they got that. different stuff. Like, they're going to be like, oh, no, you can't have love and power at the same yeah. time. But I truly believe that you cannot have absolute love and absolute power at the same time. You could probably have 50-50. I'm not trying still, to force my, yeah, my view nah, on you. You know what I'm saying? I mean, no, nah, you ain't going to force it because even when it comes to that, because the athlete, I'm an athlete. You know, right. I'm, I'm definitely going to see that, that side. And even when it comes to the music, I see that. 
but I do know a lot of people that still went stupid hard for Michael Jackson and Beyonce. It, it's people that still don't like them, you know what I'm saying? Because, but you, the amount of love in the back end that can cancel people, like we just talked about canceling, because you speaking on them, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I get what you're saying when it comes to that. But I'm just playing devil's advocate when it comes to the other side, too. Because even with Jay-Z, like, Jay-Z getting, you know, you want to say the... I don't know, bro. Keep going. I was about, yeah, keep going. I mean, keep with, going, with keep Jay-Z going. Jay-Z is like, it's like, he don't, he know he get hated on. But then again, it's like, he don't mind it. He embraced it, actually. He used that hate. When Beyonce, when they was making that tour about, oh, you cheated on me and the fighting. Jay-Z Yeah, they used that to their event. You orchestrating. So it's like, once you know the but, power that be, like, right, type right. shit, you just take control of it. I I still feel like, I still feel like you can't have both at 50. I don't think you can have both at 50-50, bro. I feel like one going to substitute for the other. One is going to be at the top. One is going to be always be dominant. You're going to have love. You're not going to have everything that you want. You're not going to be the most powerful. Once you got power, you're not going to have it. That's personally when I see what I see from my lifestyle. But how Jay-Z plays it apart is like what I could kind of see how you can kind of maneuver and orchestrate it that way. How other people I see how to maneuver and orchestrate. Um, but I still feel like Michael still had love though, bro, and the power. I really do. All right, I want to ask you guys. I want to ask you guys. Athletic perspective. Deion Sanders. He seems to have always been at his peak, whether he was in college, NFL, press conferences, oh, whatever. And now, now, head coach of Jackson State football. Shout out to them. They're doing wonderful this year. Yeah. Just had over 56,000, or was it 56, 53,000 people attend? Yeah. Most in HBCU history. I'm just saying, he's never fell off. So, that's that's what you're saying? Hold on. And I got, I'm saying that, and then I want to say something directly after yours with something that's corresponding with this day and age. Now, Deion Sanders is old school. I'm going to have something that's this day and age, too. But go ahead, please. Please. Now that's like a, I'm glad you used Deion Sanders as an example, sir. Because Deion Sanders said out his own mouth on I Am Athlete, the podcast. You can go check this episode out where he specifically said at the peak of his career, he was considering suicide and yep. he tried to go through with it. Because he specifically said that he felt like nobody was on his side. He could not trust nobody. So, the greatest cornerback of all time specifically said in his peak of his career, he couldn't trust nobody. Only he person, only people he could trust was his children. Not even the mamas. So, with that example... Again, I specifically believe that you cannot have love and power at the same time. And on top of that, you saying with Dion as far as in him going towards the HBCUs, how many people statistically the NFL at the beginning of the year had the NFL draft, right? Dion Sanders was there for a year prior mm-hmm. before the NFL. Now, mind you, Dion Sanders is a Phenomenal guy. Mm. He's a phenomenal athlete. Brings a bunch of attention towards HBCUs. How many HBCUs was drafted in the NFL draft period? <laughs> Under They weren't even drafted. They was on uh, free agents. Exactly. Unsigned. That like, still goes to his point. Yeah, I got you. You, you see what I'm, I'm saying? Listening, like, I'm listening. Okay, so okay, we, we can take it off of Dion, bro. I got another one whenever you ready. Matter of fact, go ahead. Be my guest. Luckily, so, you're not on this camera because of that haircut. But keep going. So. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. No, no. <laughs> Damn. So. <laughs> so <laughs> keep going. Love and power, right? 
Right. This is gonna. I'm gonna shift this over to our women. That's a. Are you ready for this? Yep, I'm ready. Cause this was going anyway. Yeah. Toxic. You like you like that transition, don't you, Deshaun? Red flag. You like that transition, don't you? Red flag. Good job. So. Bro. There's been a, a bit of a. It ain't even. It ain't even controversial, really. You can't say this it because it's one sided. But there's been a certain NBA player. Who has? Let's get to it. A specific. Wife or baby mama, whatever she wants to be called. Baby mama, hold that. that I mean, um, excuse me. Whatever yeah. she wants, to control, whatever she wants to be called. Who had his baby? Put him on child support, support for two hundred k a month until that baby is eighteen years old. And I'm going to tell you this right now: the entire, the entire internet is backing this woman, saying. She deserves everything that she's getting, all the money she enjoyed. She should enjoy her life. F that guy. Forget him. And they are backing this woman for playing this man. And we all know as men. 200,000. It don't. <laughs> vagina. Vagina. It can ruin a nation. It could change a man. It could cloud his judgment. And it obviously did this to this gentleman. Because he thought he found the love of his life, and she twisted that. And now, she is not getting shamed for it. Everybody's got her back. What? Everybody. Every, every, from a dog to a child to a woman, get unconditional love, except for a man, unless he provide. Everybody loves this woman, and she just played this. Even the courts, she played this man. And all he was looking for was love. But I'm telling you, and what's his name said it. I'm agreeing with a you. child, a dog, and a woman get unconditional love, and a man doesn't unless he provides. Exactly, which is why she gets the love and the power. But it's always like that. It's city girls. You think she, you think she got love and power? She got love from everybody. That's that's a great example. I'm saying this day and age, that's what is considered love. It's stupidity. She she got the love from the women, and but from, she she took the power from from bro. Yeah. So this can go back to the LBGTQ mm. community too. Mm. She gets love from them, and she gets love from the women. Mm. That's two of the most powerful groups on planet Earth. Mm. Women and free spirits. That's what I'm gonna call them because mm. it's easier to say. Mm. Women and free spirits. And if you say, we all know what happens when you say something bad about the free spirits. Mm. Yeah, they crucify you basically. Mm. Right. Before you keep going, check that. Check that. What what time are we on? Twenty. Twenty. Let, we gonna hold that. We gonna restart these cameras. All right, so we are back. We had to hit an intermission real quick, but with that being said, we are gonna go ahead and finish this convo. We we gonna finish it off with with bro. Go ahead, not finish it, but we are gonna continue. So what I was saying was, as far as love and power goes, Brittany Reiner is in, and that's her name, Instagram handle, of course. I ain't going to say it because she already got enough publicity. But that woman can literally probably get away with murder just because of all the support she got in the friend groups that she has uh, from porn industry, basketball players, basketball wives, all women. It, it is endless. And she gets nothing but respect for it. But let that have been the opposite foot. She been a horrible mother. Sometimes. And... This man tried to get custody of his child. He gonna get cussed out. Like she needs to pay me my money monthly for for this baby, and it just wouldn't work out. But as her being a, a woman, that's a black woman. That's it, that bro. That's un, that's ridiculous. Two hundred thousand. You you never you haven't heard about this? I heard about it, but I'm just saying two hundred thousand a month. Two hundred two hundred k a month, bro. A month. A month, bro. You you don't need. A hundred thousand. But the crazy part about it is what she got going on now is she was just on, I can't recall what HBCU campus, but she posted on Instagram saying, hey, I'm on, I'm at this homecoming, hide your sons on some predator type shit. She did say that. Like, so, now mind you, R. Kelly just got locked up for doing some predator type shit, being at Middle schools and high schools. Not saying that that's equivalent, but at low key. How old is she? She's 29, about to be 30. 
So here's the catch. A lot of people were defending her in in the comments of that picture, basically saying like people in college are grown ups. Saying like, oh, okay, you know, like how you said, she got the backing of multiple women saying like, it's okay, you know what I'm saying? These females, I mean, these guys in, in college are grown. So that's cool. R. Kelly, for example, did middle school. <laughs> so I'm saying like that's not funny, but I'm saying like the difference between her and R. Kelly was college, middle school. But the basically how she approaching the shit is low key the same way. There are 16 year olds in college. There are 17 year olds in college. There are 18 year olds in college. 19, 20. I'm 29, my damn self. But we. But we know who she's talking about, though. But she's listen to what I'm saying. I'm 29, my damn self. 18, 19, 20, 21 can't give me nothing but vagina, bro. Nothing but, yeah. They, I, they, they can't give me no value, bro. Uh-huh. As a 29-year-old man, there's no value in that. Even 23, 22 to 24, bro. It's 25, really, maybe. Maybe. But you get what I'm saying? Now, I'm not saying... You know, they're not legally of age. I can't, yeah. They're not legally of age. They, they still, I can go talk to them. So I'm 23. I'm still figuring myself out. So, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As a 29 year old man, I, I know for a fact this 21 year old is only going to give me some pussy. That's it. So, yeah. he brought up a scenario saying, like, she do got love and power at the same time because she got a community of women backing her up. But then she got power because she can't be touched. R. Kelly just got touched. Her doing some shit that she got going on, she can't be touched. That's on some predator type type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, like I said, like people use certain shit, circus, certain circumstances to their advantage. Like you said, she she's good. She she is willing to play the villain. Yeah, of course. I mean, and she she has the audacity to do it and to flaunt around and to still go out and get in these men's faces and some of the, like, the guys don't care. And that's the crazy part. The dudes don't care. Don't They believe, listen, I'm I'm going to sit up. Don't care. It's this way. To the point where they feel like it'll never happen to them. You are very delusional. (laughs) I'm telling you right now. You are very delusional if you believe that your dick is the difference between him, 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 and him. The same way how women are delusional to believe that their vagina <laughs> is going to be able to have the ability to turn a hoe into a housewife. The biggest game growing up was told you can never turn a hoe into a housewife. No matter how much you think your dick is that powerful, your dick, I'm here to tell you, your dick is never that powerful. Think about all of the old heads that are old right now. By themselves. By themselves. Alone. What makes you think that you're so different Single. to the point where you are young enough, you think you got your stamina up to be able to change a woman's perspective if she is a hoe? They be like this now. You know what I'm saying? Do they- they be gonna go like this then. <laughs> Brittany Renner is a perfect example of you cannot turn. Now I'm not calling her a hoe. But at the same time, you cannot turn a woman who is in set in her ways into a wife. Did J. Cole say that don't save her, she don't wanna be saved? Like, stop. She even ma- she coming out. This social media is easier to give you car facts. So like, flip the scenario, right. women. Cause I gotta give y'all the game. It's called Undefeated Minds for a reason. Stop believing that your vagina is going to keep a man in a relationship. Stop believing that your baby is going to keep a man in a relationship. When he is his mindset is on being in a relationship, then he's going to stay in the relationship. If his mindset is not on relationship, he's not going to stay in a relationship. No matter how much you think that your vagina is that good. You get what I'm saying? I tell my little sister this same game. You get what I'm saying? This is nothing that I'm not telling y'all that I don't tell my family. Stop believing that you're so different because when it comes to women in in 
you give them constructive criticism or you generalize a conversation, they try to isolate themselves by saying, I'm not like that. I'm not like that. Keep affirming some delusion. Keep affirming some shit that ain't true. You go crazy for a reason. It's called the process, the beginning of process of delusion to affirm something that is not true. We are more <clears throat> alike than you think we are different. You know what I'm saying? So the crazy thing about it is it's like from both sides, it's like you always thinking you the right, like you on the right side. Like you always think you doing good. Like you never think play victim. Yeah. It's like you said, playing victim. So it's easy to be like, man, they against me. Instead of being like, what did I do wrong? Like, what what did I do to make this perception seem like as I'm wrong to them? I don't ever think like that. And then in her instance, man, I don't know. She came out with plenty of tweets. I'm pretty sure she did with her and this dude was friends for a while. So how you not see they the dated, signs? I think they dated a couple of years. They dated a while. A while. She finally got. She got him pregnant. She. This video that that surfaced came out two years prior before she met, bro. Yeah. Where she was basically saying, "If you really want to get to the bag, date an athlete because they don't use condoms." Right. You know what I'm saying? That was two years before she met, bro. Which it was his fault that he wasn't looking into no shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You dating a girl, and I'm pretty. You sure. ain't look up her YouTube channel, nah, and bro. you ain't looked that up, bro. Nah, bro. I'm pretty sure somebody on his team, it's somebody that brought this to his attention. Bro. I agree. I it's in the locker room. We have talks in conversation as men. We have talks barber shops, bro. We you have these conversations. Even your pops or somebody in your circle that you look to be like, hey, dog. You she might bad, careful, but you bro. might want to be careful. You she know what bad, I'm yeah, yeah. But you Let might. Me, uh, let me say something. Shy is 100% right. <laughs> so, in that locker room, <laughs> in that particular locker room, it's so funny you said it. In that particular locker room, she does have a best friend in Tiana Trump. Now, all my fellas. TT? I'm pretty sure we all know who Tiana Trump is. I'm pretty sure we all know Tiana Trump. Am I right? Am I right? Oh, yeah. You're going to see okay, we a all couple know Tiana Trump. Trump. The yeah. only Trump I'm supporting. Tiana Trump is her best friend. Yes. Her BFF. Sir. Friends for life. I Big got the okay. go. Tiana Trump has said out her mouth and in a tweet and wherever else you want to look it up. How she's trying to check for LaMelo Ball. She going to ask the LaMelo Ball? LaMelo Ball. Yeah, I this give her the other balls. man's teammate. Yes, this other man's teammate. I'm just saying. What do you think is going to happen? LaVar Ball tried to tell his son LaMelo, look, man, you young, you a star, you with Jordan now, you that guy. You own this team. You on that team. And he the franchise player for somebody almost. Was it the... Um, Damn near the Charlottes. Yeah. Yeah, Michael yeah. Team. I'm um, putting his wing. He signed him, yep. That's what I'm saying. So, it's like, you got all this stuff going for you. Don't let these girls corrupt you. And what is he doing? He's falling into the rabbit hole with having Tiana Trump on his side. Not saying that he's dating Tiana Trump. Not saying anything like that. But if Tiana Trump... She's been in the industry for I don't know how long. That, she bit, wants to, that bit that had a train rail of niggas. Yes, <laughs> exactly. But to also add to that, Brittany Ryan. Is not that special. <laughs> yeah. Your dollars is, yeah. though. Your dollars is special, but your penis is not that special. Gee, if I. This is, you can. It go back. Dog, it go back to what I'm saying. I want you to understand what I'm trying to get you to get you to realize, bro. It's a trap. <laughs> that part but bro you're not superman bro superman is a is a fake character hey, bro man, nah bro he, like, he he splashed bro he feel like he's I don't give a fuck about none of that bro <laughs> I'm here to tell you the truth your penis is not that great she done had multiple penises before yes, she's not that you're not that great but that dollar signs you're in the tax bracket where a lot of men are not in the tax bracket to be that's honest. what makes you different being honest, bro. And you light skin, dog. Like, I'm yeah, you, you not a bad. He not a bad looking fella. Give you that. You got you got value to you. You definitely on a. 
you got shit so much shit set up for you that most men dreamed of having that if you fall into this shit, if you fall into some shit like this, bro, you setting yourself up with a noose around your neck <laughs> and you basically going to be hanging there holding. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. birds of a feather flock together, dog. That's all I'm saying. You saying that she was their best friend? Yes. Yeah, bro. No, bro. <laughs> Fuck no, bro. <laughs> hey. The, the, again, bro, these young dudes swear up and down that they so called different. Ain't nothing different. Everything the same. Even when it comes to being D two to D one, you still got your hierarchies. It's the same thing when it comes from being hood to even the suburbs. You got your hierarchies. You have Listen. your level of stuff that you need to know. If you didn't understand that this girl that didn't fuck with you when you wasn't playing varsity or wasn't playing this type of thing, and so you become this starter of. Whatever your team is, and she finally saying, "Oh yeah, I want to fuck with you now." She gonna do that same she shit. Gonna do to the, the next same dude. shit. It's just a different level, bro. Different levels bring new devils, and bro, my boy, <laughs> you got some in your hand that a lot of men and touched on. So uh, regardless of it, industry, you got or not, two things that that you got. You got something that a lot of men and touched on, meaning her. And then you got a career path that a lot of men wish they had. Dreamed bro. of still having. Like, and they're fighting to get. You, you, know you what went saying? overseas, like, didn't even touch college. You and, in a different type of ball game. And bro. got in. He, your he dad is so different. I wish I had a pop like you. But what? So again, bro, don't ever think that your penis is that different. To make you think that you're going to turn a hole into a housewife. But That's the number one game. Let me play if, devil's advocate with him. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, if it was written like the 48 Laws of Power, as far as in the rules to the game, I believe that should have been the first law. You cannot turn a hole into a housewife. That should be law one, bro. That goes men and women. Men and women. Yeah. You should not. First law of the player's book. Mm-hmm. book you can't turn a hoe into a housewife, bro. First law. You heard it here on first. Undefeated Minds Podcast. That's the first law. Player's book. The, if you if you put in the player's book. But the devil's advocate for LaMelo. Let's just say, look, you look young, but probably, you know, like on some super intelligent, intellectual, intuitive thinking, mm-hmm. right? What if you're using this as a little outspurts of uh, extra entertainment? Because, you know, Kobe had some stuff. Too early on, early in his career, like when him supposedly cheating, but it wasn't, you know what I'm saying? But it was with some other little females that was hot at the time. Mm-hmm. It's just like, I mean, I just wish the best of luck. Like, because we can give him advice, but it's at the end of the day, it's still going to fall into his court, bro. Um, so, back to the women. <laughs> <laughs> back to the women. If you guys recall, I was saying that uh, Brittany Reiner not only had the women's support, but the free spirit support as well, LGBTQ. The reason I say that is because she, if I'm not mistaken, goes by the slut walk connotations. Like Amber Rose type shit? Just like Amber Rose type shit. If I'm not mistaken, they cool with each other too. So, so there's a pattern. It's ho, whole life is the life for these women. Mm. It's oh no, oh, oh yes. That's that's how they go by. And again, when you have that community, the slut walk community, the women, and the free spirits LGBTQ, you can't lose because you're wrong if you do. You're wrong if you don't. And you're wrong if you, uh, I don't know, did in the past. And you're wrong for thinking about it in the future. You can't win. That's why this woman in particular has the world in her hands. And by the way, guys, I want y'all to know, she is average. She's average. You say she average? She's I, I average. She too. I'm going to tell you that. I ain't really impressed, but I just know she TT. Yes. Trying to go. Not, I mean, no, not TTG. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I forgot the G, but that motherfucker is trained to go. You hear me? She is. 
Definitely an average woman. She just knows her angles. Take this from a freaking ex model. This woman knows her angles. Yeah, she, she knows her lighting. She ain't got it, G. And she knows how to wear fucking makeup. She ain't got it, G. How you think we all will look? If and we she got that light skin privilege. Light skin, yep. That's actually the thing. That's a real thing. It's favorite amongst the entirety of the world. Light skin. And that's so crazy, but that's how the majority of the kids going to look by 2050. Light skin. Pretty eyes. That's all you're going to be seeing. You see this right here. See it right here, my boy. The thing, chocolate. I mean, cinnamon. These two men that sitting right here, they're a dying breed. Respect them, please. But yeah, that light skin, that light, the light skin shit, that's a, that's a thing. And it's sad. It is a thing, man. It's sad because that only enhances her platform. I really do. A lot of people are. A lot of people would trust her more, even though this would fall under some like colorism type shit, which I try not to entertain. You know what I'm saying? Even though you know I joke with you, calling you light skin and shit like that, I try not to entertain it because you know that is a real mindset. That is a fucked up mindset that we got in our own community, but it is a reality though. People who are lighter skin are more trustworthy. Than people who are darker skin, so in her in her defense, you know what I'm saying. Look at her with the makeup. Look at her with the with the. It's this thing called Insta face. She's very good at using the Insta face. She's playing devil's advocate, which is in right now. Women going, excuse me, their own way. She's pulling all of the attention. At the same time, but I still going back to the subject. In my opinion, I still don't think that that's ultimately love and power at the same time. Because you think it's delusion. Here, yes, I I believe it's delusion because here's why I say that she's not going to find a man, bro. Like yeah, you got the love from females and women, and right now, right now. So so so. That 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 low key gives me pushback, because if she don't want a man, then she does have both. She don't want a man. She wants men. Oh, you saying she want a plethora? She just want attention. Again, going back, ho, that's her thing. That's her. She, she want a. She want. Our, she want all of us. Like she. You want, call, you call her, hold her face. You know what she want to do? She want to smile and say, "What we doing next?" Real whole shit. I just, I mean, it's like you said, she want attention. She she want that. She earned for that. But it's like, again, it going to come back to that time clock, G. Like, yeah, you everybody got, got a old. everybody got a starting date and an end date. You feel me? You got to get old. Once you get to that point, when you ain't getting that attention, even the ones that we did see, we can go Cherokee, we can go Pinky, all of them. We can go all of them. Get where they at. Because Pinky used to be like that. That ain't all of fat. You all of them. And I still, like, you still respect them. Me and still got personal, you know, respect for them. But at the end of the day, <laughs> <laughs> if you that guy that, you know, with them, I mean, kudos to you. And but ain't none of them got turned out. None. Hey, I'm to, no, to no wife. I know Cherokee. Cherokee, she actually, she doing all right. She ain't no wife. I tell you that. Yeah, she in a relationship. She in a relationship, yeah. And then Jasmine Cashmere. No, look, we ain't gonna keep telling no, them. No, 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 no. Look, look, Jasmine Cashmere, she actually turned her life over by the Bible and has a husband now. That big old crazy. She wonder know why he married her. That big old crazy. She can suck a mean drag. Now that is one thing that Ooh. not every woman can do. Take the, the knees, man. Take the knees. <laughs> 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 Every, hey, look. Here we go, crazy. You might not be able to, uh, to turn a man, but I'll tell you what can. Here we go, crazy. That shit can just squeeze a dime and get shit out of nickel. That's how bad she is. That bitch said, ooh, wait. <laughs> Listen, bro. All right, bro. Back to I, get, the I get what you're saying. I do get what you're saying. She turned over her life. But again, that doesn't happen. In most cases, just like the Brittany Reiner case, it's like a, you, you know, it's like a, like Sally's comment or Haley's comment where it goes by every 70 something years, it's some years. It don't happen too often. 
She's just one of those unicorns that can get away with it. And Wait. by the way, she probably goes by the terminology, I'm a unicorn. It's so crazy these days. Go ahead, Deshaun. Yeah, bro, that's that's a dub, bro. That's I ain't gonna yeah. I'm, I'm I'm gonna let y'all know right now, bro. That is a dub. What 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 is our time looking like on that? Hold that thought, bro. Yeah, like at the end of the day, dog, I, I, I live in reality. It shit that we live in is legit black and white. I think people try to try to make the gray areas a lot bigger than what it really is. You know what I'm saying? But shit I believe personally, stuff is black and white. But I can't fault her. Because she goes out here using the power of intentions, telling people exactly what type of time she on. You know what I'm saying? On Undefeated Minds, it's all about understanding both sides. Whether you agree or disagree, you still have to understand both sides. Because if you don't understand your opponent, you always get got. She legit goes out here and tells people what she be on. I'm looking for somebody's son. I'm out here looking for, you get what I'm saying? It's that she even said it's fall coming. It's stepdaddy season. You know what I'm saying? She even got the video of her saying, if you want to get the bag, fuck with an athlete because they don't use condom. That's integrity, bro. She basically going out here and saying it is what it is. I can't fault you for doing that. Using your weakness. You you exploiting the people who choose to believe, again, that they are different. That they have more power over you because they believe that they're different when you're leading with intentions. Mm -hmm. I cannot fault that, bro. So I'm not even mad at her. At the end of this whole conversation, I'm not mad at you. You know what I'm saying? You're going to do your thing. Me, I'm not dumb enough to fall for the spell. I will tell you to get the fuck away from me. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm not mad at you. You feel me? Game recognized game. You feel me? It is what it is. I'm just not the type of person that's going to get got about by that type of game. You know what I'm saying? The, so, yeah, it a lot is of what people it is. going to fall up on the delusion thinking they know game. Like, you don't. Because if you have to second guess yourself and get this reassurance, you don't know game. It, it's going to sneak up on you at. The least expected time is going to come get you when you – it's going to come get you late at night. And like you said, like, there she leading with power's attention. She telling you, you got the internet now. You got Twitter. You got all these platforms, people telling you. Pretty sure you're not ignorant to when you run into this woman. Because if you know who she is, you're going to look her up. You're going to find you, stuff. You are. I feel like she's using – she's using – and this can be a controversial thing type conversation you know what I'm saying if you want to go there we can go there comment below I, I comment back on your ass but in my opinion using religious terms bible terms the greatest trick that Lucifer did was make people believe that he was not real but he told you who he was mm. you just psyched yourself out to believe it can't be true if I tell you exactly, the devil don't lie. If I tell you exactly what it is, he manipulate. If I tell you exactly what it is and you choose not to believe, whose fault is that? That's not my fault. That's your fault. That's your fault because you believe that the shit wasn't real. The power of intentions. Most people are going to psych themselves out of a situation. The situation could be dead in your face. The truth can be dead in your face. But motherfuckers will psych themselves out because they believe that this shit can't be real. It's too good to be true. Or hearing some shit like that, you got to be joking. You got to be lying. Or my dick is good enough to the point where I dick you down and you, I change your life. Big shit talker. <laughs> no, bro. No, bro. So... Again, it goes back into what she's saying. If that's the type of time she on for all the gentlemen who don't want to get got, bro, stay the fuck away from her. And for all the ignorant dudes who choose to believe that you just that different, be my guest. Find out. And when you get got, I'm just the type of dude that say, I told you. 
Because they're going to laugh. I'm going to laugh at you. I'm going to laugh because it is what it is. You can't sit at this table, dog. I tried to tell you. Get your ass over there with them suckers. Nah. Because I bit, tried to tell you. You got God. You bit into it. So now look. <laughs> enjoy the taste. You just like Adam. Yo, you bit into it. Enjoy the taste. Get up out of here, Come dog. Come sit at this table, cuz. <laughs> get, get up out of here, dog. Come sit at the table, You bro. with them. But anywho, I just, again, I truly believe this is my conclusion. I brought this subject up on my Instagram. You know what I'm saying? That you cannot have love, absolute love, and absolute power at the same time. They're going to love you. They're going to love you when you're dead. Even, facts. Even, what? Well, we can even go with Nipsey Hussle, bro. Like, you know, I'm a huge Nip fan. I've been a huge Nip fan for the longest, bro. Rest in peace, man. Even, respectfully, even the fact that when he was on his up and coming. People didn't know about him. People didn't know about him. People claimed that they finally got to know who he was when, when he got with Lauren London type shit. She was low key. Even though, you know what I'm saying, he, he attracted her to himself. Um, if you ever watched the Vlad interview, you know what I'm saying, that was long. I think it was like 2009, if I'm not mistaken. But um, on his peak of rising, when he finally got to his peak, talking about victory lap, obviously that's his peak because he's not here no more. Yeah. But people was hating on him. Yeah, yeah. People started to bite his style. Yeah. How many people you see talking about being prolific? You know what I'm saying? Like, how many people you still see talking about long live Nip? Like, how many people you still talk, you hear him talking about the principles of Nip? You don't, you don't hear him even, you don't hear people talking about the even book list that's fine. that he talk about. That's fine. But that's the crazy part. So many people came out, even WAC 100 came out and said, he's not a legend, which WAC 100 has a point Correct. according to the numbers. But at the same time, to diminish his Character mm-hmm. That's what he was focused That's on some sucker shit In my opinion Dog he at the peak of his career His shit is going skyrocket Victory lap is rising And now all of a sudden You want to come out on an interview Talking about some I don't think he a, he a legend You knew for a fact That was propaganda And you chose to do that You get what I'm saying I'm not saying that That was wrong for what you was doing But I, I strongly disagree with it My personal opinion he ain't here to defend himself. He's not either. here to defend himself. Think, uh, so at the end of the day, like, you know what I'm saying? You can't have yeah. love while you going up at the same time at the the peak of your power. Bro, been talking about this shit since 2021, 22. At, at an interview where he was saying, hey, I'd rather invest into assets. Fuck all them cars. You get what I'm saying? Nobody knew who Nip was. Yeah, Nip, when Nip when first came out, when his first, uh, when his first tape. And he was selling that shit for $100, and Jay-Z bought 100 copies of them. And even before then, he was like, I finally realized, like, I want to start looking to, you know, assets, buildings, properties, and stuff like that. And then he started reaching back, giving back to the people in this community type shit, teaching everybody. It's like, <clears throat> you can't really, you can't say he not a legend. And in what aspect are we looking at legend? Because if, if, if you want to look at it from music industry, all right, cool. Had I think a, impact yeah. ha, Have all that shit. Because at the end of the day, that shit come and goes. It can be fabricated. That shit come and goes, bro. If you want to be legendary. Because think about it. All the music people, when they on top of their thing, even TLC, all the way down to DMX, people that run that shit for three, four years, that's legendary to them. Oh, you had your run. We was at the top of the world this time. And then you kind of go be pushed off his old head. And then the next wave come. But Nipsey going to be... In this community, a legend forever. You always gonna go to around that street in the, the Crenshaw, Slauson. You gonna be legendary forever because not of what you did in the music industry, but for what you did for your community type right. shit. And right. would you rather be remembered through your city and your people around what you done for the people in that nation? Because again, them people that was impacted that you touched gonna always talk about you, gonna always remember who you are. And they kids gonna remember who you are. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that gang with Nip, that color, he a part of a color now. Nip blue, not a oh, lot yeah. of Crips get that recognition. And I'm, again, not a lot of people get that recognition. Snoop Dogg talked about it. Obama wrote a letter to you. The Nation of Islam that came out to your thing. It was fair count. You know what I'm saying? That's respect to the almost. And a lot of people don't get that notoriety and a lot of people don't get that respect. 
So, again, fuck what Wack talking about. You feel me? It's just like, bro, you impacted a lot of people that respected real and that was authentic, that was coming up in this entrepreneurship wave on their own. And these people that got shit handed to them not going to respect it because they don't know how to. You know what I'm saying? So, but like you get, again, to correlate what you said, you can't have love and uh, power at the same time because Nip talked about it a lot. You know, with the police coming in, he was doing right, but the police still was tainting on him. And then when he was doing wrong, you have all the love, but you ain't at your pinnacle with your money. Which one you want to have? You want your money or you want your love? Yeah, he said I took a couple steps back to get it. You got to. And that shit hurt him. So that's that, that's that situation with Nip, but I can even bring up the situation with, and this is more an irrelevant topic, you know what I'm saying? We're going to conclude it after this. But 50 Cent, right? 50 Cent got Ghost. Power put Ghost to. Then he got Power Put Ghost 2 that's about to come out November 22nd. He also got Raising Canaan. And he got BMF. He also has the situation, I mean, the the, um, the show where the inmate who got himself out of prison because mm-hmm. he became his own lawyer. Yeah. Which, again. That was a movie, right? This is on camera. 50 Cent, Nipsey Hussle, um, Randall Pitch is like my top favorite entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. like hands down. I love their process. I studied their process. I'm still studying their process. But let's go with the concept of power. Mm-hmm. Ghosts couldn't have <laughs> love and power at the same time. Mm-hmm. Have, you, have you seen Power? You watch Power? So um, you just like me. Even even with his wife, Sasha. Tasha, she couldn't have love and power at the same time. Yeah, Kanan couldn't have love and power at the same time because he got to show Kanan, which explains how he became the guy he became. Wow. And, you know, shout out to Robert Greene, 50 Cent and Robert Greene did a book, The 50th Law. Right. The 50 Cent came out with an interview that was talking about how the 48 Laws represents or is correlated to the street. You know what Correct. I'm saying? How people maneuver. He was like, Robert Green, know what he's talking about. You know what I'm saying? This is on some street shit. But ultimately, what I'm saying is with that show, if you really want to understand the show, read the 48 Laws of Power and all of the books that Robert Green has dropped. I damn they got all of them. Um, but basically... To be able to have power, you will always have somebody who's trying to cut you because you always have somebody above, up under you. Yep. At your neck. Even the situation with Ghost. At your neck. He was low key. That's why he got his nickname, Ghost. But at the end of the day, Tommy even wanted his position. At your neck. Him and Tommy even feud. And also, Tariq was the one who took him out. Your own son. At your neck. At your neck. <laughs> Love and power. Which can you have really both, bro? You really can't have both. That's just my... That's how I'm going to conclude it. Comment below. Let me know what you think. If you're a real power fan, you know what I'm saying? Comment below. Let me know what you think. I could debate each character and why they couldn't even have ghosts. Even if we go to Power Book Ghost 2, how the teacher couldn't have the other teacher because she really low-key wanted the student. She was really smacking the student. You know what I'm saying? But the student, it is what it is, bro. Watch the show. You know what I'm saying? That's free promo to 50 Cent just because I'm a fan. So, at the end of the day, bro, I don't believe that you can have power and love at the same time. It, do you? Nah. No? Nah. If you want love, get love. Do you believe that, Quan, that you can have power and love at the same time? To answer that question. Because women been combating me all day. Is it okay for me to jump back to Dave Chappelle? No. Because that's going to leave it to deep, bro. Yeah. I'm not going to go deep. Go but ahead. I want to say, if you guys heard me say the word twilight, I didn't say he was at his peak. I said twilight. Mm-hmm. The reason I said twilight is because Dave Chappelle, he's, he's been in the game for about 30 plus years. Dave Chappelle 
and LeBron, Kevin Hart, all these uh, all these top tier athletes and all these top tier uh, comedians and everybody, when they're in their later years and everything starts winding down, that's when they stop being the funniest and stop focusing on the funny and start focusing on the politics. Mm-hmm. And that's also when their checks start getting larger. So I say he's in his twilight. And with that being said, usually when people get in their twilight, they do get hated on the most. So yes, you cannot have love and power. You can only have one or the other. And in this case, cancel culture, you can't have shit. You can't have shit. Yeah, that's <laughs> so. a fact. You can't you can't have nothing when it comes to this so called cancel culture, bro. If you don't be, if you don't agree or see their point of view, not even see, because if you see somebody's point of view, that means you're being understanding to their point of view. Not the fact that you don't disagree you you don't agree with it, you you just see where they're coming from. This cancel culture dog, if you don't agree with them, it's over with. Like Fuck all that. You said the wrong line. You said the wrong thing. We're going to cancel you, period, point blank. And what that does, to me, in my opinion, is creating a soft environment. Um, also, it's creating, um, it's taking away your freedom of speech. It is what it is, bro. You, I, I can't tell you. That I agree with everything you say. Same way how you can't tell me that I'm supposed to agree with everything that you say. I think I said that. Fucked up. But basically, we don't have to agree. We can agree to disagree and still be cordial. You know what I'm saying? Like, it is what it is. You sit at your table. I sit at my table. But as we should respect one another. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I view it personally. I just still believe that ultimately you cannot have absolute love and absolute power at the same time because one is going to be compensating for the other. It is what it is, bro. That's just how the world works. And that's how war works. So that's it, man. That's basically what we got for the day. We was vibing and it is what it is. So with that being said, you know, you got anything you want to say? Can't have love and power. That's it. You can't. Fuck it. And if you can't read between the lines and you can't see what somebody telling you, shame on you. Because at the end of the day, you got the. It's always gonna be in your face. It's up to you to peep it. Pay attention to the details. The unwritten rules. Okay, so there's an episode that I did not drop that a young lady specifically asked about. How do I feel about interracial relationships? I did not drop that episode. You didn't. So I want to say it here because this episode is going to get dropped. Personally, she asked me specifically. Let me give you guys some context. Basically, this is how I feel about the situation. I'm not going to say my personal opinion towards it. I'm just going to say it based off of how you how she asked the question. She basically asked me because I've talked about the Shirazad Ali book, The Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman. She basically stated that Shirazad Ali don't does not agree with interracial relationships. And she was saying this is the reason why because of, of an identity crisis. So, as a mixed woman cuz she was saying she was mixed. She has a Two-sided parents, you get what I'm saying? White, black, I don't know specifically which one. But basically, she was saying as a biracial woman who wants to date a black man specifically, how should she go about the situation based off of the book? You know what I'm saying? In my opinion. I personally believe that as a woman who is biracial, Whichever side you choose to procreate with is the side you need to identify with. You get what I'm saying? Because the men carry the legs. If you have a white, if you choose to procreate with a white guy, and y'all have a son, 
the DNA that's going to be pushed is a white, is more white than black. You know what I'm saying? If you procreate with a man, black man, and you, and you get what I'm saying, y'all have a son. The DNA that's going to be pushed is more black than it is white. So I personally believe you should identify with whomever you choose to procreate with, whether that's black, whether that's white. You know what I'm saying? That's just my personal opinion. I'm not saying I agree or disagree with interracial relationship. I'm just saying personally, that's just who I think that you should procreate with. I mean, you should identify with because the legacy is passed on through him, not through a woman. You know what I'm saying? You just bear the child, but he carries the legacy, especially if he if you guys have a son. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, do, do how y'all feel about what I just said as far as an interracial relationship? I didn't say whether I disagree or agree. I'm just saying a young lady asked me about basically <coughs> how I feel about a Being woman. Being able to identify themselves. Yeah, a mixed woman choosing to procreate with a black man. She prefers the black man, but she has issues with black women because she's biracial. And we kind of hit on it about the light skin bullsh- bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like as far as in that, but you know, do y'all have anything that you guys would like to suggest to this young lady? No, I mean I I agree with that because again, like when certain shit hit the fan, they gon' you gotta like you got a mask to cover up yourself, like with, and we ain't gonna keep it like bad turns. But okay, for the police, like. They're more liable to come at me and antagonize somebody with my skin complexion, with me being, you know, black with locks, than it would be when somebody with lighter skin, fairer skin. Uh, we still can say that from slavery time. We can still say that shit to now. It's just it's easy for you to identify yourself with. Oh, well, I'm 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 white. Or you can play that that was advocate with that. Yeah. Um. So I mean, yeah, you want to kind of make sure you be able to solidify yourself. But we can make that suggestion, but how many people are actually going to... How many people going to listen? Listen, it's up to you. Because, um, again, I mean, it's already so many divisions and so many things out here, bro. It's like, we can only say we told you so. Um, so, again, that's my input on it. Uh, I actually just... Have my biracial niece being born. Shout out to her. I'm so happy that she's here. I'm going to go see her sometime next week or whatever. But with that being said, I don't think it's so necessarily a bad thing. But what I do think is for the men and women that are out there that are trying to procreate and have their own little me's running around, honestly, you shouldn't try to interracial breed just for the simple fact of I want my babies to be pretty. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a fact. That's man. that. That's a fact. I think that's the biggest thing uh, that's that's wrong with everything. That's wrong with the whole society in a whole. People just want pretty babies, so it's like ooh, ooh, okay. Because you, you basically call in. Excuse me. Sorry. To, Go ahead. Um. Well, I'll say excuse me. I don't want to say sorry. Um, you basically calling both sides ugly without them procreating together. Exactly. Exactly. And if you if you look at different cultures outside of the American culture, I'm not gonna say black, I'm not gonna say I'm gonna say American culture. If you look at uh let's say Africans for an example, an African woman is gonna look for an African man. Or oh, whatever they or whatever they Nigerian, yeah, yeah. you know, ethnicity uh, inside whatever in that African country, like Nigeria, go to Nigeria, Egypt, Egypt, they're right. going to look for their own. Right. Indians, not Native Americans, for those of you that don't know. West Indians. Indians. Are yep. going, yeah, are going to go for another Indian man because that's their culture. Uh, Was it Palestinian? Mm-hmm. Going to go for Palestinian. Iranian. Going to go for Iranian. It, we're the only culture that mixes and matches. And that's okay, but... It ain't okay. For the right reasons. <laughs> it ain't okay. Do it for the right reasons is what I'm saying. If you love that person, <laughs> love them. 
But love them for them. Don't love them for what they can make for you. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I agree with that. I it agree. I agree with that. But yeah, it that's ain't, what I was it, getting at. It, it ain't. That's it. what I was yeah. getting at. The so, other stuff, it you 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 literally there's some truth to that. Dying breed. You know what I mean? You, there's some truth to it. You got you got white people who fantasize about black people, and that's the, the only time. reason why they fuck with them. All it's the because they fantasize about them. All white women fantasize about black men because they believe that black men got big penises. Not only that. And their genetics, what we can do. Not only that. I've actually asked a white woman. I haven't yeah. had many white women ever in my life. I had probably a total of three, maybe four in my life. That's maybe a lot. Five, maybe six. That's a lot. Maybe seven. I'm and multiply that by three. I'm telling the truth. <laughs> and you see this? Me and more, I love you. Thank you. Now, <laughs> yeah. now the, I asked the white woman, I was like, why do you like black men so much? Because mm. she got her virginity taken by a black man, and then she was talking to me, another black man, and yeah, my skin is fair, but I wasn't any different. You're still her. black. Okay. I'm still black. black I'm skin. still African American. I'm just a different tone of skin, yeah. and that happens sometimes. We still love you. Same. Exactly. Thank you. So I asked her, why? And she said, well, you guys, you're actually... A you're cooler. The penis thing. You guys smell better. When it rains, what does a black man smell like? Uh, uh ourselves. Ourselves, right? I'm, not just saying this I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm this is not the horse's mouth. We smell better. I was I was just as confused when she said, I was like, Are you serious? Is that a thing? She said, Yes. No, nah, I, I believe it because that little girl walked across me today and it was raining. I was like, our we do not change. Our smells don't change, and if you if you go to uh, let's say you go outside the culture, you you get some smells, <laughs> and I'm you not, cannot say you I'm can, not take this. <laughs> you cannot say that a smell don't turn a woman on, a specific smell. Ah, uh, yeah, for sure. And for that sure. has and the reason I'm bringing it up is that has a significant reason in breeding, <laughs> and also when women choose. To start a partnership uh, with. Huh? <laughs> What'd you say? I said, Siri, eat this conversation up, boy. But continue. Mm-mm, mm-mm. I'm ending it by saying, mm-mm. I'm ending it. <laughs> but, but, yeah, that's a, it's, it's an American thing, man. It's, it's mainly an American thing. Interracial, it has its pros and cons. But all in all, do it for the right reasons. Yeah, if do it for the right reasons. You brought up a great situation. Don't do it for no better shit. Don't do it for no cream shit. But this is the society we live in. Motherfuckers is perfect. Motherfuckers is creep. We have a lot of people out here who have weird fetishes. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to say it is what it is. Y'all motherfuckers need to get that shit checked out. You know what I'm saying? I'm, it's not human. I'm not going to say but that. But at the end of the day, nah, the reason why... The reason why I'm saying that is because we live in a society where you can't say anything. You can't say what's unhealthy. For example, our people, multiple people knew at the time, multiple people knew at the time that R. Kelly was doing what the fuck he was doing. Multiple people knew at the time that R. Kelly went through what he went through. Nobody went public, went on a public platform and said, bro, I need help. Nobody said that shit. But all of a sudden, now that he gets locked up, now that he gets into the situation, he tells you this shit stemmed from childhood. Now all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying? That shit don't matter. He a pervert. He been doing what he was doing. You know what I'm saying? At the time, y'all knew he was a pervert. At the time, y'all knew he was being a predator. Nobody said, dog, that's not healthy, bro. You need to get help. Nobody said that? I don't really fuck with that, dog. That, that, that shit not cool. You know how many comedians came out and said? Mm, R. Kelly, including Dave Chappelle to make this shit full circle, came out and, and made a whole skit talking about pissing on females, underage women. Nobody came out and said, bro, you really probably need to get help, bro. So here right now, if you have a certain mindset, if you have a certain uh, 
thing about you that you like that's uncommon. You know what I'm saying? People got some real fetishes. But just understand, some of y'all need therapy, bro. Some of y'all need help. Some of y'all need to be able to debunk and work through a lot of this childhood trauma that y'all got going on, believing that that shit is healthy. When all of actuality, that shit is harmful and it is not healthy, bro. So, I'm going to end the conversation like that. It is what it is, but... That shit ain't cool. That shit not cool, but the young lady who commented on her, that situation where you were saying, how did, how should we feel and whatnot, whatever man, this is my answer to you, whatever man you choose to procreate with is a man, is the culture that you need to identify with. Basically, personally. again, whoever makes you happy enough to classify yourself, then just all means do it. Because at the end of the day, you, it's it's your life. You got a life to live. Choose. Choose wisely. Right. Do it. At the end of the day, do whatever the fuck you want to do. And this is why I always say what I say at the end of the day. Together we stand. Divided we fall. Fuck the middle man. Because at the end of the day, it's just you and you. We'll see y'all in the next episode. We're going to holler at y'all, man. Shout out to Quan for uh, focusing on the cameras. Shout out to Shaw for get his ass back up in here. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. We ain't gonna talk about me, but we'll just keep it like that. We gonna holler at y'all. Peace.